Okay, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but I just have to get something off my chest because I am upset about it. These people simply will not leave Alita alone. And just let the record show first that it was first them who went after Alita. If they can say all they want about the Alita fan base um, going after other movies, the fact of the matter is the media first attacked Alita. And maybe at least a month in advance, maybe in January, before the movie even began to play, they came out with articles talking about her eye size and, and her body shape and and all other sorts of criti- so-called criticisms like that. And after that, uh, um, the fans, you know, some other things happened with other movies. But let just let it be known that it was first the media who went after Alita. And even still, after... Almost, yeah, almost an entire year. It's, it's February 1st now. Um, Alita is about to play. Well, it's playing right now, actually, on HBO. It's been on for about an hour. So it started at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, um, and it is about 9 right now. So it's been playing for an hour for the first time on HBO. And this should be a, a, um, a positive night, you know, and mostly it is. It's not going to stop being positive because of this. But it's just that on a, on a night where you you kind of just let Alita have a good night, you should let Alita have a good night. You think it's appropriate to um, start talking about the, some of the creative choices around her body, right? Her eye size and her breast size, and it's the same thing that we saw from the New York Times writer, girl, I forget her name. Uh, it's in here though, Darla Margolis or something like that. So we're going to start reading here. There's just a few points in here that I just want to point out. Let me try to make this bigger so that you can see it. Okay, so at a critical moment in Alita Battle Angel, which airs on HBO tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Alita, the cyborg battle angel herself, imagines herself a new body. And how does a super advanced cyborg with no memory of her past imagine her body? With bigger breasts and slimmer hips, of course. Now, um, she goes into some stuff about the writers. Let's just go. So it is, however, more notable in a later battle than you because there is a scene in which a leader, later actor Rosa Salazar, literally grows breasts, larger breasts, right before our eyes. What is the problem with a woman's breast size? <laughs> and let me just go up to it before I continue reading here. Just to show you that this is a woman who is writing this, and she seems to have a problem with other women having larger breasts for some reason. And what else does she go on to say here? She says, um, she quotes the infamous Manola Dargis, that was her name. Listen, I'm not saying the entire movie is garbage. But this moment is objectively ridiculous. No, it's not objectively. It's just your opinion. It's your very... Let me stop my... It's your very bad opinion. Okay? It's not objective at all. As New York Times reviewer Manola Dargis wrote, Why does Alita Rosa Salazar, who has a human brain, even have breasts? Why does any cyborg that isn't a sex bot or a wet nurse... Um, what's what's your problem with somebody changing their body to their ideal appearance? What's your problem with the way people want to present themselves? If this was a trans woman, would you have a problem with them having breasts? Would you have a problem with them having larger breasts? Or is this or does this rule only apply to cisgender women are you being sexist against cisgender women are you saying that they can't choose what their body should look like that's what I'm that's the question okay because you say you believe in one thing but you act a completely different way I'm speaking to this writer here and 
when they do stuff like this, it 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 completely undermines the what they say, uh, their ideology. When they they claim they want to liberate women and to rid the world of sexism, but they do the most controlling and sexist stuff out of anybody. Okay, and let's just go on here. I have to admit that's a lot a good logical reason, but it fails to explain. Oh, wait a minute, I didn't read it. <laughs> okay, so here's the first reason she tried to come up with. A leader still has the mind of a human woman and probably wants to look like one. That's it. It's that simple. But anyway, let's go on reading here. I have to admit that's a good and logical reason, but it fails to explain why she decided to hang on to her giant, alarming bug eyes. What's wrong with her eyes? She has big eyes. Okay, <laughs> perhaps she sees herself as a giant bug. She has giant human looking eyes. They're just larger. And if you pay attention, there are other characters in the movie who also have large eyes just like her. Notably, uh, Gilda, right? Because why? Because they're from the same um, race, I guess you could say. They're from the same planet. You go into the... When we see the scene when she's in the spaceship, not the spaceship, but the... Uh, the sunken the ship that fell, I guess in this in this underwater right now. Alita goes into that ship and she sees the remains of some of the Earth um soldiers and they have large eye sockets because they had large eyes as well. It's just a trait of her of her race, of where she comes from. But I want to show you something because this lady is hung up on uh, Alita's appearance for some reason. Also, hate to break it to you, girl, but most women don't look like Barbie dolls. Here's the double standard, though. Let's look at, um, let's open this image in a new tab. You know what this is? This is a muscle suit, right? This is the kind of things that, um, this is the kind of thing that actors wear under suits, superheroes, Spider-Man, Captain America, they wear these under their suits to present these ideal human figures, right? But, guess what? Most men don't look like that. And nobody complains. Now, you're, you're forcing this sort of adherence to realism upon women, but you're not doing the same to men. That again is a sexist double standard, and it's a sexist double standard against women because you are telling women how they can and can't look, right? You don't see people saying, "Well, that's not realistic. Why? Why does Superman have this many muscles? You know, if he's a Kryptonian and he has super strength, why does he need muscles at all?" Nobody's out there talking like that. This person has sim simply insecurity issues, and it's the same thing with these other women out here. Who are complaining about um, women about the way they look, and at the same time saying they should be able to look that's their body, their choice, right? But you know, it's crazy. <laughs> it's hypocritical. It's so hypocritical. And anybody who can see through it, um, why would you? Why would you identify as one of these people? They call themselves feminists, but they're not feminists. They're they're actually anti women anti-female and let's see here what else there was one more line from here that I wanted to read she goes over a lot of stupid reasons really she's just uh, ridiculing and mocking the movie but I think it was here's the here is I guess what this is what it comes down to as well breasts on cyborgs androids and robots have long been a convention of the sci-fi genre and the real reason for this of course is because nine times out of ten it's straight men designing the robots straight men love to see mechanical boobies and that's all these people they just they're so insecure and they're jealous really because that's what it reeks of it reeks of somebody being jealous that nobody is looking at them and nobody's paying attention to them and nobody wants them, right? And they just, they're tired of the competition. 
right? They want they want to be the most attractive person in the world, or they or they would like to get rid of the beauty standard so they can get any person they want, right? But it doesn't work like that. Everybody has standards. Everybody has an ideal, things that they want to look at, things that they don't want to look at, and that's their business. You know, you just deal with it. Either you try to get uh, if, if if you know you're interested in somebody, but they only like a certain thing, and if you really want that person that bad, I guess if you want to change your body to look the way they want, then that's your business. I mean, you, you shouldn't have to change yourself for anybody, but if you want to go, you're not going to change them. So if you want to go after them, then you do what you got to do. Or you just find somebody else who will accept you the way you are, which is the best thing to do. And if they can't accept you the way you are, then... Keep it moving. It's that simple. So, um, one more thing before I finish this video, uh, before I end this, the uh, petition, the original petition that we had by Philip Gruber, or I forgot his name, something like that, is probably going to end in this month, February. Um, the policy that I saw on change.org said that it had a um, the unless they were extended, the the petitions only lasted 12 months. So what what we can do is just start another petition and put it out there, and it's better than having no petition. And um, we should just start pushing this one right now. And if it doesn't really go anywhere, it doesn't go anywhere. But hey, at least we you know at least it's out there. At least we try, and that's that's pretty much it. So I'll put the no this this link will be on the website of course I should go to that website now <laughs> um, yeah I think I'll do that okay the link will be on the website here it's going to be in the same place as before except it is I guess you can say it's an update now and it this this article or well not this article but this post no longer points to the old petition it points to the new petition now and that's about all we can do so um thank you all and share this around go to the link and share it around please and um have a good weekend and I, yeah talk to you later bye